Plane Trigonometry, Chapter 8, Section 2, The Unit Circle and Its Functions. First of all, we need to remember the equation of a circle. The graph of the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1 is a circle with center at the origin and a radius of 1. And you see the circle graphed here on this diagram. We call this the unit circle because it has a radius of 1. Because it has a radius of 1, the circumference is c equals 2 pi r, or 2 pi times 1, which is 2 pi. So the circumference of this circle is 2 pi. Consider the point 1, 0, which is on the x-axis, as a starting point. We can move clockwise or counterclockwise along an arc on that circle any distance s and stop at a point x, y on the circle. So imagine that you're in a little car or whatever and you start at one zero and you're driving along the circle and you stop at some point. You drive a distance, a length of s and you stop at the point x, y. If s represents a real number and it should because it's a length and it's positive then we moved counterclockwise. But if it's negative, then we would have moved clockwise. We would have gone uh, clockwise from 1, 0 instead of counterclockwise. And if s happens to be 0, that means that we didn't move at all. So every real number is paired with one and only one point on the graph of the unit circle. In other words, no matter how far you drive, whether it's positive, negative, or 0, you're going to end up at a particular point, at one point. So for example, let's say that s is pi over 2. If we start at 1, 0, and we move pi over 2 units counterclockwise, we are going to end at the point 0, 1. And we would say that 0, 1 corresponds to pi over 2. If x, y is the point on the unit circle that corresponds to the real number s, then we can define the six circular functions of s as sine, cosine tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And you see the abbreviations here next to the words. Circular functions. And if you're wondering why, it's because we just are developing them based on the unit circle. If x, y is the point on the unit circle that corresponds to the real number s, then the sine of s, the sine of that arc length, is y. The cosine is x. The tangent is y over x. The cotangent is x over y. The secant is 1 over x. And the cosecant is 1 over y. Now, from these definitions, there are three pairs of reciprocal functions. The sine and the cosecant, sine is y, cosecant is 1 over y. The cosine and the secant, the cosine is x, and the secant is 1 over x. And the tangent and the cotangent, the tangent is y over x, and the cotangent is x over y. <clears throat> now note from the figure below that point Q corresponding to arc length s has the coordinates cosine s, sine s, because remember we just said the cosine s is x, and the sine s is y. Okay, this figure shows the relationship between the sine and the cosine. Now, what you're looking at in the first circle we have, or in both circles, we have a right triangle drawn. The triangle hypotenuse goes from 0 to the point x, y. Well, that radius, that hypotenuse, is a radius of the unit circle. So the hypotenuse has a length of 1 and it's a right triangle. So x squared plus y squared equals 1. But remember, we just said x is cosine of s, and y is sine of s. So if x squared plus y squared equals 1, then the cosine squared of s plus the sine squared of s must equal 1 as well. Now, since the point x, y, which is cosine s, sine s, represents a point on the unit circle, then x must be between negative 1 and 1, and y must be between negative 1 and 1, because it's a unit circle. The farthest out it goes is 
1 away from 0 in any direction. So x and y have to both be between negative 1 and 1. That means the cosine and the sine have to be between negative 1 and 1, which is convenient because they are. So what that means is that for any value of s, sine of s and cosine of s exist because the cosine of s does take on every value between negative 1 and 1 and the same for the sine. So the domain is the set of all real numbers. In other words, no matter what you put in for s, you're going to get something between negative 1 and 1 for both x and y. Now, you got to remember that the tangent is y over x, and that is going to be undefined when x equals 0. And this is going to occur at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, the positive and negative for both of those. Uh, now, what we want to do is we want to take those and kind of look at the pattern there. And you'll notice that um, one way of putting it is it's the odd multiples of pi over 2. It's 1 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2. The next one will be 7 pi over 2. Okay, an equation or an expression that kind of helps you figure that out is down here. That s cannot be pi over 2 plus n pi, where n is any integer. In other words, take pi over 2 and really add or subtract any number times pi, and you're going to get what tangent cannot be, and you're going to have asymptotes there when we get to the graphs. Now, the secant also has x in the denominator, so secant and tangent have the same domain. The cotangent and the cosecant are undefined when y is 0, so the domain is the set of all real numbers where s cannot be n times pi. In other words, it can't be pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. So it's multiples of pi, both positive and negative. So here it is kind of all spelled out. The domains of the six circular functions assume as n is any integer and s is a real number, sine and cosine, anything. Um, they're expressed a little differently here, secant and tangent. It says s cannot be 2n plus 1 times pi over 2. In other words, it's, it's odd multiples of pi over 2. And then cotangent and cosecant cannot be multiples of pi. All right, so my identities. <clears throat> the following are true for real number s, provided the denominator is not 0. We have two that are called quotient identities. We have that the tangent of s equals the sine of s over cosine of s. And then cotangent of s, not surprisingly, is that flipped upside down. It's the cosine over the sine. The secant is 1 over cosine, and cosecant is 1 over sine. Those are called reciprocal identities. And by the way, it works the other way, too. Cosine is 1 over secant, and sine is 1 over cosecant. And then we have two, um, Pythagorean identities. Now, this is actually leaving one out. We've already seen that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And then if you use these properties, these identities above, with that, you get these other two Pythagorean identities. 1 plus tangent squared of s equals secant squared of s. And 1 plus cotangent squared of s equals cosecant squared of s. And these are called identities. The reason they're called identities is that they are true no matter what s is. And that's what an identity is. All right, so we have an example. For s equals pi, determine the point on the unit circle to which it corresponds and its trigonometric function values. Pause the recording, give this a try, and resume to check your answer. Okay, so the point negative 1, 0 corresponds to uh, s equals pi, as you can see here. And then using the x and y value, negative 1, 0, we can find all six trig functions. Uh, because y is 0, the cosecant and the cotangent are both undefined. These are the exact values for the quadrantal angles. The quadrantal angles, remember we talked about those with degrees. Those were uh, 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. For radians, it's going to be 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And it's really important that you get which of the degree angles those correspond to. And here's just a chart with all of the exact function values. You can see uh, for sine and cosine, it's either going to be 0, 1, or negative 1. Uh, for tangent, cotangent, and secant and cosecant, uh, it's going to be a little different there. So for tangent and cotangent, it's either 0 or undefined. For secant or cosecant, it's either 1, negative 1, or undefined. 
All right, try this example. Use a calculator in radian mode to find the six trig functions for pi. Pause the recording, give this a try, and resume to check your answer. So first, set your calculator in radian mode. Again, hit the mode button and then choose between degrees and radians, choose radian. And there you see it right there. And then put in each of the functions, and you should get negative 1 for cosine, 0 for sine, 0 for tangent. Now, for secant, you must do 1 over cosine, and you get negative 1. For um, cosecant, you must do 1 over sine, and this time you get an error message because it's undefined. It's divided by 0. Um, and then if you did cotangent, again, it's not showing on here, but you would do 1 over tangent, and you would also get an error message because you're dividing by zero, so it is undefined. Notice that the calculator functions, uh, cosine with a little minus one, sine, minus one, and tangent, do not re represent cos the reciprocals. They're not cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Um, we're gonna get to what those are later. Those are the inverse trig functions, but what you must do for the reciprocal functions is actually make them reciprocals. One over cosine, one over sine, and one over tangent. Now because the circumference of a circle is 2 pi, any integer multiple of 2 pi added to s corresponds to the same point. In other words, they're coterminal angles. Uh, just like before with coterminal angles with degrees, we add and subtract multiples of 360. Because there are 2 pi radians in a circle, we're going to add and subtract multiples of 2 pi. So again, we really are talking about coterminal angles here. So the cosine of s plus 2m pi equals the cosine of s, and the sine of s plus 2m pi equals the sine of s. And again, when you get back all the way back to where you started, the cosine, the sine, all six functions are going to be what they were in the original angle. So for example, the sine of pi over 2 is the same as the sine of pi over 2 plus 6 pi. The definitions of the functions can be used to determine the signs of their values in each of the four quadrants. Since sine is y and cosine is x and tangent is y over x, um, etc., you use the sine on the x, y to determine the sine on the function. So we've seen this before. In quadrant 1, everything is positive because x and y are both positive. Quadrant 2, sine and cosecant are positive. Everything else is negative. Quadrant 3, tangent and cotangent alone are positive. Everything else is negative. And quadrant 4, cosine and secant have positive values. Everything else is negative. Um, one way to remember it, quadrant 1 is all, 2 is sine, 3 is tangent, 4 is cosine. You can make a little sentence. When I was in high school, we did the sentence, all students take calculus to remember uh, which is positive and which quadrant. Now, that only deals with the um, primary functions, then you would have to have the reciprocals go along with them. Okay, so suppose that the cosine of s is negative 3 fifths and the sine of s is 4 fifths. If s corresponds to the point x, y on the unit circle, determine where x, y is located. Okay, give this a try. Look at the sign. That's what's important, the positive or the negative, and see if you can figure out where this point is located. Pause, give it a try, and resume to check your answer. Okay, because the cosine is x and the sine is y, then x has to be negative 3 fifths and y is 4 fifths. So that means... It's going to be located in quadrant 2 where x's are negative and y is positive. Okay, suppose that s is 3 and s corresponds to x, y in the unit circle. Determine the quadrant where it's located and determine whether the sine and the cosine are positive and negative. Okay, this time you have the measurement of the, of the angle or the radian measure of the angle or of the arc. Pause the recording, give this a try and resume to check your answer. Okay, so pi over 2, which is 90 degrees, is about 1.5, and pi is 3.14. So this arc must be somewhere between pi over 2 and pi. So it's in quadrant 2. In quadrant 2, x is negative and y is positive. So the cosine will be negative and the sine will be positive. Okay, use a calculator to find approximations for cosine of 4.5 and sine of 4.5. And then tell what quadrant the angle lies in. All right, so pause the recording, give this a try, and resume to check your answer. 
Okay, so we get for cosine of 4.5, negative 0.21, etc. And for sine, negative 0.97, etc. Um, these again are approximations, not exact values. Now, they're both negative, which tells us that 4.5 must lie in quadrant 3, which means that it has to be between pi and 3 pi over 2. Now we can find the exact sine and cosine values and, and the others for the real numbers and their integer multiples. So we're going to look at how to find for pi over 4 and for pi over 6. Pi over 4 is really not too complicated. We've got our unit circle and then we have the line y equals x which is going to cut uh, quadrant 1 exactly in half. So where y equals x meets the circle, x squared plus y squared equals 1, where those two meet, that's going to give us the exact value for um, the cosine and the sine of pi over 4, the x and y values. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve this system of equations. Okay, and we're going to do that on the next slide. So we've got these two systems, and we know x equals y. So we're going to replace x with y. And now we have y squared plus y squared equals 1, and we're going to solve for y. So combine like terms, 2y squared equals 1. Y squared is 1 half, so y is the square root of 1 half. We reject the negative because we're in the first quadrant. And rationalizing the denominator, we get the square root of 2 over 2. So, since y equals x, x must also be the square root of 2 over 2. So the point, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, corresponds to pi over 4. And knowing that, let's us find the six trig functions. Now we're going to do the same thing. Um, we're going to figure out how to get pi over 6. Now this one is actually trickier. you got three points here. You've got r, which is 0, 1, q, which is x, y, and q is going to correspond to pi over 6. And then we've actually got the reflection of q, so we've moved it, reflected across the x-axis, and that is q prime, which is x negative y. And that will actually be negative pi over 6. So the length of q, r, is pi over 3, and the length of q, q prime, is also pi over 3. So those two distances from rq to q and q to q prime must be the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, points and we're going to put them in the distance formula, and that's what we have here, and set them equal to each other, and then we simplify. Now we notice we have x squared plus y squared in the right side there, and x squared plus y squared equals 1. We've already talked about that. So we're going to replace that with 1. And what I did here after simplifying is I also removed the square roots because they're both square roots, so we can just square both sides. And then we turn this into a quadratic equation. And to make life easier, we divide everything by 2, and then we factor. And when we factor, we get that y is 1 half or negative 1, but we're going to reject the negative 1 because our point is in the first quadrant, so y is positive. So since x squared plus y squared equals 1, x squared plus 1 half squared equals 1, so x squared must be 3 fourths. How I got that 1 half squared is 1 fourth, 1 minus 1 fourth is 3 fourths. Take the square root, and that gives us the square root of 3 over 2. So the point is the square root of 3 over 2, and that corresponds to pi over 6. And again, you could use those to get the six trig values. You can do a similar argument to find pi over 3. We won't do that, but pi over 3 is really just those two, the x and y reversed. And then we can use those to find the exact values. This is a chart that shows the exact values for sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant for pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3. And this is the unit circle. This has all of the values for the special angles in every quadrant. So we have all the multiples. So you've got 1 pi over 6 and then uh, 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3, uh, 3 pi over 6, which is pi over 2, um, etc. And it just goes all the way around, so you can trace all the angles all the way around the unit circle, and you see all of their values there. Um, you'll notice that the x and y's, the only thing that changes on the multiples, um, for the negatives anyway, are where the, the negatives are, for the ones directly across the circle. 
Okay, so use the unit circle that you just saw to find these values. So find the sine of 5 pi over 6 and the tangent of negative 2 pi over 3. Pause the recording, give it a try, and resume to check your answer. Okay, just looking it up, we find the point, and then we can find the sine because we know the sine corresponds to the y value. For part b, we know the tangent is y over x, so we use that. Okay, the rest of this is additional practice, so as you go through these, pause the recording, give them a try, resume to check your answer, and proceed this way until the recording is finished.